But now for the legalities. As I mentioned earlier, the government's safety of Rwanda bill intends to override the Supreme Court's judgment and declare that Rwanda is indeed a safe country. The Supreme Court ruled in November last year that the government's Rwanda plan is unlawful owing to the fact that in its view, Rwanda wasn't a safe country. This was based in part on evidence gathered by the United Nations, but the government responded very swiftly with a treaty signed with the Rwandan government as well as emergency legislation known again as the Safety of Rwanda Bill, which saw its third reading this evening. We'll work through that result shortly. Now, that bill has been criticised for simply contradicting the Supreme Court's findings, including from former Lib Dem leader Tim Farron earlier this afternoon. Because if we have got evidence to say that Rwanda is safe, present it to the court. Do it in the proper way. It is dangerously authoritarian for us to decide um, uh, that we can decide on a matter of fact of law rather than presenting it before the courts. It's not only an overreach, though, Sir Roger, it's also ridiculous. I mean, I, I, if we're going to declare Rwanda safe just because we want it to be, I declare Blackburn Rovers back in the Premier League and Alan Shearer to be 30 years younger and back in a number nine shirt playing up front for us. I want, there we are, make it so. Tim Farron there. Now, others have suggested this, in, this is entirely proper, including the regular host of this show, Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg. But who has the right answer here? Well, I'm here for a lawyer off. I'm joined now by the barrister and former Tory councillor, Philip Taylor, and the immigration and human rights lawyer, Shob Khan. Philip, if I may, to, to, to down the line, if I may, to you first, are, do you think then that this uh, Rwanda uh, bill going through will be another charter for lawyers to frustrate the work of Parliament? That's a very interesting question. I doubt very much whether it will. I mean, the real issue here is the sovereignty of Parliament, and you've got a clash, a very clear clash, between Parliament and the judiciary. And the concern I have, and I'm sure many politicians have, is that where do you actually draw the line? I draw the line at Parliament, and I say Parliament must have the right eventually to override certainly the Supreme Court if it needs to. We have a precedent for that from Harold Wilson many, many years ago, and I think in certain circumstances that has to happen. In this case, I think it must happen because the public are fed up to the back teeth with all the nonsense with the last two bills. We've now got a third bill. It must be sorted out so that the Conservative Party can win the next election. Sharp, do you think this uh, bill tonight, assuming it gets through in a, f a couple of hours' time, will stop the boats? Um, no, I don't. I mean, I think, as has been said in Parliament um, and in the media and by so many campaigners, others repeatedly, the point is if someone can risk their life, as we saw, you know, the tragic incidents over this weekend, some people died trying to cross the channel. If that doesn't stop them in this weather, getting on a small boat, trying to cross the channel, I don't think some distant, remote chance they might end up in Rwanda is going to stop them. And that's the whole point. Unless we have safe, legal, lawful um, ways for asylum seekers to reach the UK, there's no other way. The point is, even if we stop the boats, uh, are we basically thinking no refugees should ever get to the UK? Because if the point is they should claim asylum, like people claim, which isn't actually the law, that they should go to the first safe country. What's safe? What's the first safe country? So only Scottish, Irish, Welsh uh, people should claim asylum in the UK. I think that's ridiculous. How does anyone ever get to the UK? So, I mean, firstly, it won't stop the boats. But secondly, even if it did, or we did think it might be a deterrent, the point is we have to take some responsibility with the number of refugees and unfortunately the tragic events all around the world right now, all the crises, one after another, um, there are going to be more refugees created. And of mm. course, we have to play our part rather than saying we're an island, nothing to do with us, just go to your neighbouring countries. I think that's ridiculous. I mean, Philip, of course, the government, if weren't they here now, they would say they do provide us a safe way for legitimate refugees to come here. But the problem is with, with so-called economic migrants paying thousands of pounds to come across and jump the queue by coming by a small boat. Well, yes, I mean, that is the that is the real um, problem, practically, of where we are. We have too many legal migrants in the first place. The government, of course, have got to bring some sense to bear over the problems with boats. Uh, there is a really s serious humanitarian problem. You will have all of what are, my colleagues have called as lefty lawyers. We're not lefty lawyers, we're just ordinary barristers doing our job representing Are you people. a lefty, Philip? No, I'm not. I'm right in the middle. But I'm a good trade union supporter and I'm a good uh, middle-of-the-road conservative. And I believe that Rishi Sunak has the right 
uh, right policy at the moment, which yeah. he must succeed with if we're going to get some sense, because the Labour Party don't have a policy. It's just a nonsense what they're, okay. what they're saying. Show, but are you a lefty lawyer? I mean, what, it, what do you think when you hear people like, even today in Prime Minister's questions, the PM, Rishi Sunak, use that term lefty lawyers again today? I mean, are you a lefty? And do you mind being called or described as, as a lefty lawyer? Um, I don't mean, uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily mind being described as a lefty generally, but I think, yes, as a lefty lawyer, what does that mean? Like you were saying, it was basically an insult today. He was trying to insult Keir Starmer, mm. previous human rights lawyer, by saying, oh, you actually wrote a textbook um, on European human rights law. Well, that's actually a huge achievement that he should be really proud of. He's an expert in his area. So I don't really see how that's an insult. Oh, you're a lefty lawyer. Um, but also, I mean, just picking up firstly on the point about safe legal routes, there aren't any safe legal routes. We create one, especially when we want, like we did with the Ukrainians. Um, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians came. We found them housing. We found them accommodation. As the prime minister said at the time, we opened our hearts. We opened our homes. Has it caused a huge problem? Has the country collapsed because we've hosted those few hundred peop thousand people? No, it hasn't. And that's the point. So if we can do that for them, why can't we do that for other countries? Why can't we do that for Syrians? Why not for Afghans? Why not for so many other countries? So there, there aren't any um, safe legal routes um, uh, uh, generally. But yes, we create them when we want them. Um, and so that's the point. Um, and then also just quickly, just from the legality of it, if the government is actually so certain that what they're doing is legal, is lawful, then why are they so desperate to oust the powers of courts? The whole point of this bill is no court will have any jurisdiction to consider whether Rwanda is a safe country or not. If they're actually so sure it is, take your evidence to the court, see what the court says.